Alrighty, folks, let's pop over here and see uh, about this challenge, shall we? Uh, hello, hello, welcome in, everybody. My name is Voodoo Val, and I'm going to be your host yet again for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. I'm very excited for today for challenge number two. We're going to be sticking to our beach type theme for this challenge set, and we're going to be diving into a little bit more of Photoshop, a little bit more of, you know, how it works hand in hand with Adobe Express. But we are also um, going to be using some of the generative features to create like design elements instead of using it to edit photos um, and to kind of do some compositing and things like that we're going to be using generative features uh, upon shapes uh, and using it to create fun textures and things that can uh, kind of create the design elements that we want to use for graphic design and social media posts which I'm pretty excited about so um, I'm gonna pop over to Photoshop real quick. Let's go ahead and take a look at our challenge uh, file here. If I just pop over here like this. Um, so if you would like to join me for today's challenge, all you have to do is check out the description right below. There is going to be a link there with the starter files for you folks. Um, and you can download that and you will have exactly what I've got here. So let's take a look through all of the different assets which are available uh, within the file. Um, you can see it says challenge number two, create a design for a beach party in Photoshop using generative fill, then animate the design with music and voice over in Adobe Express. So there's a lot of stuff, a lot of moving parts and things uh, that we're going to be getting into. I'm going to go ahead and hide my info, which is just if I look into this group, it is just the... Um, the challenge to title and the, the text there. I like to group that all up uh, for you guys so you can just hide it. Uh, and then we can take a look a little closer at what we've actually got going on here. So what it is, is it's a cool frame. And like I said, we're sticking to that beach type feel, that, that ocean vibe. Um, and it's like a frame which we could use in a graphic design project that has a lot of really beautiful, almost like um, running river, ocean waves, um, uh, tide froth kind of vibes to it in a really lovely way. Um, and I can open up my assets here and take a peek. Not only do we have this frame, but we also have this one here, which I kind of did along uh, the same lines. And I'm gonna go over a little bit of how I did this, and then we're gonna create some other elements with some different shapes. So I am going to go and ha go ahead and hide our assets. Uh, and the first thing I'm gonna do is come over and grab um, my shapes, which is right, actually right behind me, I believe. Yeah, right up there, uh, my shape tool, my rectangle tool, which you can access by pressing U. So I'm going to grab that rectangle uh, and I am going to uh, let's let's snag ourselves a nice blue just so everything is very matchy matchy, maybe like a almost a greenish blue here. Uh, and I'm just going to snag that color and go ahead and draw ourselves a, a rectangle. Um, and the first thing I'll do is I'll come in. Uh, I'm going to hit V on my keyboard just so I can move this around easy. And I really just want to kind of center it uh, in my canvas here. Uh, we'll come back to our shape tool, pressing U uh, on our keyboard, unless you want to snag it from your taskbar there. Um, and I am just going to go ahead and uh, kind of alter the roundness of our corners here. So um, these corners, when they're locked together, you can round them all at the same time. You could also, if you wanted to, come in and grab one of our little brackets here um, and round it out like so. What I really like to do is pull it all the way out so that it has um, the corners perfectly sharp. Um, and what I, what my goal is here um, is to only round the top two because I want to create that nice arch. Uh, vibe. So I'm going to just in my properties panel here, I'm going to actually unlock it um, because that locking mechanism, you can see I can toggle it on and off. If it's unlocked, then that means I can come up here um, and oops, let me make sure it is actually locked. Um, I should be able to come up here and do this one at a time unless I can um, unlock it from here. Yeah, there we go. So if I unlock it, I can come in into my properties panel and go ahead and round it. I'm just going to pull this uh, all the way. Um, here what we also could do another let's see an, uh, kind of an easier way to do this is we could round both of them uh, or 
all four of them rather so they're all rounded exactly the same amount and then I could come in and then just pull it out pull the bottom corners out um, all the way uh, until they're sharp which creates a perfect arch um, just a, a nifty little nifty little trick there to um, create some interesting shapes out of uh, simple shapes uh, so now that I have this um, arch what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, because I'm not going to change this shape, I'm just going to go ahead and convert it to a smart object, hit V on my keyboard, and I'm going to use my um, snapping uh, grids to kind of, I think, I, th I think that that's fine. We can kind of, I think maybe free transform this and alter the, the size and shape a little bit. Um, my free transform there was just a control T or command T if you're working on uh, a Mac not a PC like I am just so that I can reshape this and I'm holding alt uh, and shift so that I can resize uh, perfectly from the center of the shape without ruining the aspect ratio or the width or height of it um, at all. So now that I have my rectangle there, I'm leaving a little bit less uh, on the edges. Another thing that could be cool is if we left the same amount of space from the bottom and the side uh, roughly we can kind of bump this down with my I'm just using my arrow keys to bump it down and leave a little more space in the top because maybe we put a title here once our arch uh, element is created that could be interesting um, so let's go ahead and leave that there and what I'm gonna do is hold my control key or command key um, if you're working on a Mac and I'm just going to click the icon for our rectangle what that does is it will uh, select my little quick selection it will select the uh, element which is on that layer and I can right click here as long as I have a selection tool selected first um, and I can say select inverse just so that I'm selecting only the space uh, on the outside of that thing that I initially uh, uh, selected um, and now what I can do is we can come in with some generative features and create some really interesting business here around the arch. Um, now I do not have my uh, contextual taskbar um, kind of visible right here. So just if you do, then you have it up and you're ready to go for the next step. But if you are like me and you don't have it visible currently, all you have to do is go up to window. You can scroll on down uh, into, let's go ahead and click this little little button here tap 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 uh, and under option and tools you'll see contextual taskbar and it'll give it to you right here uh, now a word of advice as you use your contextual taskbar um, this is a, a newer feature um, it is kind of a new moving floating object within the UI of the uh, of the app and this might seem you know it might f feel a little different um, at first so what I say is if you are not comfortable with it floating around or moving as you uh, use the contextual taskbar go ahead and pin it to where you'd like to keep it I'd, I like to keep it right here almost as if it's attached to um, my my other menus here and I click my little uh, kebab menu or my meatball menu here whichever and um, I could say you know pin pin bar position which I think it was already pinned by default once I turned it on because I typically do that um, but you can pin it to wherever you want um, and it will not actually move as you're you know working on your project so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that like that um, with all this selected I'm gonna come into generative fill uh, and what I'm gonna say is you know this is gonna be an ocean themed project we need elements for so I'm going to say Let's uh, do like swirling blue and white texture that resembles ocean, I should spell ocean correctly, ocean waves. I think that that uh, will, will work well. And let's go ahead and hit enter. Uh, and it'll do a little thinking and it'll start putting my generative uh, layer here and the various versions of it. It'll give you about three versions uh, to choose from. There we go. Okay, that's kind of cool. That's that's kind of a cool one. That's almost like a, like a wave tunnel, which is actually really beautiful. It also resembles like agate stone a little bit as well. Let's see what else we've got. This one's also very cool. Um, 
and then let's see what we got here this one maybe not so much this one doesn't have enough of the you know that swirling vibe that i really like but i do love this one this one's nice i also love this one but let's kind of change it up just a little bit shall we um, now looking in this properties panel as we start to use our generative features you can uh click on any of these variations and it will show you the prompt which was used in order to create it. Uh, you can also come in and alter uh, the prompt which you have used. So I can kind of add a little bit more to this. And I think what I'd like to add to it is, so I say swirling blue and white texture that resembles ocean waves. Let's go ahead and say um, that resembles ocean waves uh, flowing diagonally flowing. Let's make sure I put a space there. Just to give it a direction because I don't really want it to be swirled around. You know, I did say swirling, but I want the swirling to be more of like the the, the movement of the texture, not the actual direction of everything. I want it to be flowing uh, like kind of across the page, similar to how that first initial um, example was. So let's go ahead and see what that does for us. And you'll notice that it does have my first three still here, so I can keep switching back to those if I like, and it's all still on the same generative layer. Uh, and when this is done, I'll have three more, there we go, with their own prompt. So now you can see if I go to this one, it switches back and it shows me my prompt. But if I flip to one of these new ones here, you can see that it has created that, uh, that new generation and it has also changed the prompt here. So I can remember what I did in the past, what I liked perhaps about certain things. And I actually really like this one as well. Um, we can take a look at this one. This one's kind of cool. It's getting a little, a little crazy. Um, this one is much closer to what I was hoping for actually. Uh, and I do really, really like this one. In fact, um, I, I, I might do uh, another one that's just, you know, regenerating exactly since this, this prompt did give me what I wanted. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, and then we'll do a couple of design elements and see kind of what we we get so that we can move into Adobe Express. There we go. That one's really cool. Um, not a big fan of this one. This maybe you know, something that's a little more minimalistic, you know, it could work as an interesting texture. This one is cool. I do appreciate the fading look, um, but honestly, the first ones for all of them really are pretty good. This one's great. This first one is great. This first one's not bad, but maybe this one is also in the running. So I think, yeah, I think this, this, and this will kind of be our, uh, our vibe here. So um, with that in mind, let's go ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this generative layer two more times. So I'm just going to hit control uh, if you're working on PC, command if you're working on a Mac. Uh, and I'm going to say uh, control uh, J. Oops, not control F. That will open up a completely different panel. Um, one second. Okay. <laughs> Control J uh, to duplicate and Control J again. Uh, and what I'm going to do is let me go ahead and pull this up so you all can see my layers uh, a little bit better. I'm going to like this one shows this one piece that I really like. So I'm just going to go ahead and rasterize this layer because uh, I like that. That works for me. Um, I have a, uh, a, a layer mask going on here uh, because we generated around that shape, um, which is fine. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hide that. We'll come back to this and notice it's still, it's a duplicate of the generative uh, layer. So I can come in and find one of those others, which I really appreciated uh, like this one, which was really cool. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and rasterize that one as well. Um, I will hide, select this layer and I will come over to this one with the diagonal kind of shapes and things that I liked before. And we'll go ahead and rasterize that one, um, which is pretty darn cool. So, um, with this in mind, uh, let's go ahead and I think we could probably do, you know, another shape or so, uh, a sh another shape would be interesting if I go ahead and let's hide that. Let's also maybe do a, a circle of, of sorts. Like let's get like almost some little pieces of, uh, of ocean uh, kind of generated here. So I'm going to go ahead with that ellipse tool. I'm going to select 
Uh, and I'm going to say generative fill, and we'll do something similar. Uh, we'll we'll say a um, swirling shapes. Well, let's say swirling blue and white colors like ocean water see what we get kind of want to do just like the same sort of vibe and see what it see what it does see if we get something we can use all together um and i'll just uh honestly this is actually pretty cool right here that's pretty neat um let's go ahead and also do moving diagonally like we did with the other one moving diagonally i gotta sound it out uh let's see if that gives us something that is like just within that circle something that moves not the shape of the circle uh that's beautiful i wish it weren't so bright but or maybe maybe it's fine if it's bright that's kind of gorgeous I might I might keep that so let's go ahead and we'll do the same thing um, and by the way you don't you don't have to do um, these generative images like rasterizing them and and all that stuff as you go through this um, this is just my personal process um, and I I like to do it this way only because I know that I'm going to be using um, this file, like uploading this file directly to Adobe Express. Um, and I know that Adobe Express is not going to like these generative layers. So that's why I am doing that. Uh, let's go ahead and, um, duplicate. And I'm going to rasterize that layer. And then I'm going to hide it. And I am going to switch over because i did like this blue one which i felt like matched with a little bit with what we've got going on and we will also rasterize that layer um now this works i think it's pretty cool uh i want to kind of keep all of these arches and things together as well um and and put it into our assets now we have our mask here so i'm gonna actually let's go ahead and convert to smart object oops let's not convert to smart object while it's hidden let's unhide these uh, first uh, I'll convert to smart object um, and then rasterize it and again this is like a personal preference of mine I do that because I know that it will um, kind of flatten and give me that arch without the layer mask and it's still transparent and then if I rasterize it then it just makes it exactly what I can see um, without the ability to open the smart object and go in and edit the mask I know that I don't want to edit the mask after this although you may not like to do it that way because maybe for your project you're going to want to go back and um, edit the mask a little bit. It, it really is um, personal preference, but uh, I'm just going to do that. Convert to smart object and rasterize. And I'll do the same thing here. Convert to smart object and rasterize uh, layer. I just want uh, rasterize layers for this so that I can um, open this in Adobe Express. So convert to smart object. Do, do, do rasterize layer. I'll drag that up here and I'm just dragging this into my assets folder uh, because if I un if I unhide that then I have all these nifty little pieces um, and if I zoom out here you can see I've just got all of my um, frames layered on top of each other and this is really cool because this will allow me to open this as is in Adobe Express I'll have access to all of these layers just like so and I can start to toggle certain things and move certain things around and that will work out really nicely so I'm gonna go ahead let's delete I'll delete my info um, I do uh, what was this one here let me go ahead and hide that one was pretty nice. Let's also um, convert to smart object and uh, then rasterize it. We'll throw this in there too, just so everything's all together. Um, and then let's go ahead and I don't think I need uh, either of these. I'll delete that. Let's unhide and let's also ungroup this. I'm just prepping this file. 
Um, so let's go ahead and ungroup layers. Uh, so now I'm just gonna save this. I'm gonna save this as uh, challenge number two on my computer. So I'll go control S um, because I've already saved it. If you haven't saved your project uh, at all, you can say control or command shift uh, S for save as, save this file to a location on your computer and then you can dive into Adobe Express. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna bring this right over here. Um, and what we're gonna do is uh, select start from your content because this will allow me to snag things from uh, my, uh, my computer here. Uh, so I'll come over to challenge number two um, and we will just go ahead and open that up. You can see it gives us a little preview here so we can start to peek uh, at what we will see when we open it up. And it should all be just layered um, like an Adobe Express project um, exactly as I had it in my Photoshop. So let's go ahead and say open uh, and take a peek at what's going on. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, you can see here we've got all of our little pieces just like so. Um, and what I'm going to do is find a nice image uh, in the media panel right here, um, or a video, because uh, we kind of want to create a, a cool video here uh, for our project. So let's go ahead and say um, videos. I'm going to say ocean waves. Perfect, and let's scroll through and see what kind of ocean waves we can find. I've I've kind of looked through some of these, and I've seen a few that I liked, uh, and I'm hoping that some of the arches we've created really match nicely um, with these. So let's see what let's see if I can find one of these longer ones here. Let's see what we've got going on. I guess not all of these. Like I don't have to do a super. A super long one something like this could be cool something like that could be interesting um let's see let's try this one let's go ahead uh, and let's go ahead and rotate this around and snap that i'm just gonna try to line this up so that it takes up my whole canvas for my little animation video here and i'm gonna bring this all the way down to the bottom and I'm just gonna kind of hide some of these and or, or remove some of these move them around until I find which one of these frames matches best I think this one is gonna be too blue uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit delete on my keyboard I think this one also this one could work but I think it has too much of that dark blue so we'll remove that one this one's looking pretty promising to be perfectly honest this one is a little too bright oh that might be the one one of the previous ones, that might be the one actually. Let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna move this. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that because this looks pretty great. Um, these are cool though we might not, it was just kind of an idea like can we make some of these uh, interesting shapes? Maybe we don't need that though. Um, and let's go ahead and just say edit timeline so I can uh, kind of peek at this and I will say show layer timing and I'm gonna just bump this out of our way here um, and we will let's bump our like as I select my elements you can see I can start to see them on the timeline we'll bump that out of the way and we'll just take a look at our video for now so we've got this really cool you know waves fading in and then maybe right about here if we want then we can drag our frame um, and kind of have our frame pop in uh, and then maybe our frame can last a little while like to about here and then maybe our frame will go away and then maybe our little dot which could serve as like a logo of sorts can pop in um, so let's say that that's where we want everything in our video positioned and let's add a little bit of animation on each individual piece of this to kind of create a nice um, a nice lineup for our video so let's go ahead and say um, as we edit our timeline we will um, I can see these dots above my timeline where certain elements are coming in so I'll say uh, here on our um, on our arch I want uh, to do animation and we'll have this uh, Let's have this fade in uh, and then we will also have it uh, fade out and then we will also have our circle um, fade in, come down to animation, we'll say fade in and we also have it 
uh, fade out. Um, so we kind of have to use our imaginations here because it's not, um, you know, we have limited time today, so it's not wildly detailed, but you know, we, you can see how it's like, you know, doing our little promo video for this place. We can have this come in, throw some text in there, um, uh, to make an announcement and then it'll, you know, go away, show you some waves and then the company logo or the, um, you know, beach party logo can come in, which would be really cool. Um, and we can also add a little bit of voiceover. So let's add um, very briefly um, at the last part of our stream. Let's go ahead and do a, a, a tiny voiceover for this, shall we? You know, it's, it, I think you can see where it's going. You know, it needs some extra love and attention, but I think that you can see how cool um, we can really start making this. Let's come into audio and we can say um, record voiceover. Uh, and I'm just going to, you know, talk over the top to, to show how easy it can be. So start recording, gives us a countdown. Welcome to your vacation hotspot of 2024. You know, something along these lines. Now a promo text sort of shows up. Look at the beach again. And then take a look at our logo and maybe we put the date here to show you when it's at. That sort of thing. <laughs> So there's our finished recording and obviously not really a scripted voiceover, but you can see it adds our voiceover right here. So if I play it. Welcome to your vacation hotspot of 2024. So you can really make some pretty cool promos with this. Um, unfortunately, that's all the time I have for you folks today. I do have to take off, but hopefully that gives you um, a little bit of uh, inspiration when it comes to not only using generative features within Photoshop to create stuff for, uh, you know, kind of graphic design elements rather than doing uh, photo editing or photo compositing and stuff, kind of a new avenue for you to explore, uh, but also how easy that is to take those generative features and then create a whole uh, video or piece with it. So I can't wait to see what you folks create. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time for challenge number three. Adios folks.